And I think for us, it's always about the project. And we, we do our best, like other architects that we know, and to put our ego aside and to really go after what, what's, important for the, what's important for the benefit of the project and the client. Episode 142. This is The Business of Architecture. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. If you believe that it's possible to make money and do good, then this is the show for you. If you aren't already on the Business of Architecture email list, make sure you claim your free account on businessofarchitecture.com by clicking the green Join Today button. I'm your host, Enix Sears. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. Today is the second half of my interview with architect Clay Arell. Arell is a principal at AB Design Studio, an architecture firm based in Santa Barbara, California. He's been recognized locally and nationally as an influential leader in design and architecture, and that's why he's on the show today. Today we pick up again with Clay Arell, where he shares how he and his partner Josh Bloomer have built AB Design Studio into an architecture firm recognized around the world for incredible design and client service. What was it like for you in 2007, 2008, in terms of the recession? Well, we noticed things getting a little uh, odd right around February of 2008. Uh, projects that were slated to start weren't starting. Projects that w were full swing were going on hold. So we were kind of looking around, um, no crystal ball in hand for sure, but just looking around going, something's up. Let's, let's start... Uh, looking at what we need to do here, here, and here. And, you know, those areas being, you know, the business, our personal financial situations, um, you know, the company financial situations, and uh, as well as marketing and clients and everything. So we took a pretty, pretty good look at what was going on for us and uh, begin to, to kind of slow things down on our end, meaning we, we let go of some people and it, it kind of happened over several months in 2008 uh, and then early 2009 we had uh, a fairly big project that we were working on uh, stop and that pretty much put the the uh, the pin in it and so we had to get rid of the last couple people that we had on board um, so that was right around February of 2009 by April of 2009 we brought back a couple people uh, on uh, you know brought back one prior employee and then another person and started it started moving forward for us at that point um, but it was still tenuous and we we got you know one of the things we did we got super interested in our business we got really interested in in our financial reporting our financial you know p l's and balance sheets and where our money was going and you know, it, you know, we started, I think that's when we be, went from architects running a firm to business owners running an architecture firm. Mm. We really took on learning about all the aspects of the business, um, not just the architectural part, but every aspect of the business and understanding um, what levers to pull when we need to pull them and how to do that. And, um, you know, we, we jokingly say that that's probably the best thing that ever happened to us, but in, in, in seriousness, it probably was because we learned firsthand how to survive through that and how to plan ahead for the future. So we've made a lot of decisions in the last, what, eight, nine, eight, seven or eight years now that have coming out of that that have really helped us uh, maintain where we're at today. Uh, if you had to pick out a couple levers of things that you, you know, you, in this focus on business, when you went back and you said, okay, let's relook at the business, let's uh, get a little bit more involved in the financials, you know, what would you say are the big levers that you're really keeping your eye on right now in terms of the finances and in terms of the business itself? Um, the, 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 the key levers, uh, if you will, that we look at from a business aspect, uh, and uh, I mean that from a 
um, operational side is uh, we look really heavily at cash flow and and by that we're we're looking at we're constantly looking six weeks out of on what bill what money do we have coming in and what bills do we have to pay and um, what does that look like for in a, in a six week week period which usually includes you know two payrolls um, so we're constantly looking at that uh, <clears throat> as well as looking at our ARs and money coming in because if the money's not coming in then you can't really do much with your cash flow so those are the two main ones we look at on an operational side on a like on a firm wide scenario we're also looking at at different things um, for example we have some reporting and matrices that we look at in terms of staff performance, uh, billable efficiency, uh, are, 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 are people spending their time billing on working on projects that are billable or are they spending their time working on projects that aren't billable? Um, what's that ratio? What's that percentage? So we look at a lot of those, those types of levers, one from an operational cash flow side and one from a um, if you'll call it a, you know, what's our output, what's mm -hmm. our output potential with our staff, um, and what, where is it sitting in reality based on, on the workload we have. Do you have a target utilization rate that you shoot for? Uh, yeah, we shoot for 75%. Okay. And we've, you know, we've, the industry standards about 60 to 65 is what we've seen. Uh, we're targeting 75, 80% pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're tracking that? You're tracking it every month. Yep. 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 And well, we um, have ups and downs, you know, so mm -hmm. some, some months are in the 60s and some months are in the 70s. And, but we're looking at it and we're tracking it and we're noticing when it's uh, going up and we're noticing when it's going down and we're making adjustments as best we can. Okay. And do you have a, how about your net multiplier? Is that a, do you have a target for that as well? Well, now you're getting into a little bit of an area where Josh kind of handles stuff. Okay. Um, but uh, we're generally looking at our, our net multiplier in, in the two and a half to three range. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. So for our listeners, utilization rate is just a metric to track uh, how efficient your firm is and what your, you know, how much, how many percentage of time your staff has spent working directly on projects versus the amount of time they're spent working on overhead, what we would call overhead projects. And what, what bookkeeping system are you using? We have continually used uh, QuickBooks uh, Professional Service Edition. Um, we've looked at other things in the past. We've never just, we've just never made the jump into any other platform at this point. Mm-hmm. How difficult or easy is it to pull those kind of reports that you need as an architect from the QuickBooks professional services? Do you find it lacking or is it doing all right? Um, it, so, so on an accounting side, we use QuickBooks and we also use a, a database system in, that we've um, purchased years ago and have uh, customized it with the uh, the company, and that's where we get all of our reporting out of. Um, gotcha. But essentially, it, it tracks all of our time. It does our invoices, project budgeting, um, our fee revenue projections for every month goes inside of this this database. And so at any given moment, we can look at our utilization rates, um, our billable percentages, and all those those metrics that we like to look at. Okay. And we look at it on a weekly basis. Very cool. What is that? Friday, end of the week, beginning of the week, middle? Um, usually Monday okay. for the week prior. Gotcha. Gotcha. And Clay, what, what would you say is your biggest business challenge right now? What's If there was something that's keeping you up, what is it? Sorry, say that again? So what's your biggest business challenge right now? If, is there, you know, if there's something that's keeping you up at night or on your mind constantly about the business side of things? You know, my accountability in the company is marketing and business development. So I'm always concerned with, you know, right now I'm concerned with, you know, June and July of next year. <laughs> mm 
So, you know, accounting is always looking backwards. Like, what did, what did we just do and how did it go last month or last week or last quarter? Uh, I'm usually traveling in the conversation of where are we at of Q2, Q3 of, of the following year, or, or in this case, since we're ending this year. Um, so, you know, what's keeping me up at night? Probably, you know, the, the things that are on my mind mostly is, we're coming up on the holiday. January is usually a soft month in our business and, and a lot of times in architecture firms we've seen. So, you know, we come back from the break, what are we getting started on? Uh, and then what are we, you know, where are we at in, what are we targeting for April, May, June? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what direction, where do you want to take AB Studio? What's, what's in the future? It's a good question. I think, um, you know, what's been on our mind recently is really expanding our in, in our L.A. market, expanding in the L.A. market more. We're starting to do more work in the San Luis Obispo, um, northern central coast region, uh, and, and bleeding into San Francisco. So I, I think for us, uh, I can see over the next year or so potentially uh, – really expanding into LA and, and potentially having another office north of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds pretty aggressive to me. I mean, would you guys, would you characterize you and, and Josh has been on the aggressive side of things in terms of firm growth? Yes. I think we've been very aggressive. We doubled in size between 2013 and 14. And again, in, at the end of 2014, we were twice the size. So we've, we've had a lot of growth. Um, I, I think for us, it's not, you know, there, there are companies out there and I know people who run companies that aren't in architecture, but they run other companies that, you know, their target is to grow 200% year over year for five years and then sell their business. I don't look at it from that perspective. Um, we really look at it from, you know, there's, a, there's, uh, there's, there's, an, there's areas that we like to design in and we like to work in and in those areas not just geographically but also project typology but in those areas we want to expand and when we expand in those areas we notice that that usually requires some growth and whether it's you know putting a one body in in a place like San Luis Obispo or or putting 10 bodies there I don't know but I you know we feel like we have the opportunity to um, to grow into these other areas and either service them from Santa Barbara or service them more locally. And Josh and I really aren't adverse to taking those kinds of risks. We, we sort of enjoy <laughs> swinging out really far and uh, swinging the net out really far and seeing what we can pull in. So um, for us, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a fun, fun aspect of where we may be headed. Yeah, and speaking of where, where you may be headed, do you have a clear, firm, firm vision for five or ten years down the road? And if so, what does it look like in terms of size, in terms of types of projects? I'm sure you do. If you're working with business coaches, I'm sure they've had you put together a vision board or talk about your ten-year plan. Yeah, we, we've, we've talked about it a lot. Um, for, for Josh and I, it, it moves around a little bit because you know, ver various factors happen. Um, you know, especially family related and things like that. So, you know, from a standpoint of a five year, 10 year plan, he and I, Josh and I have really been interested in doing more development based clients or more development based projects um, where we're the developer and the architect. Uh, we, we purchased a building here in Santa Barbara at the end of 2013, uh, remodeled it gutted it, remodeled it, moved in in May of 2014. Um, and so we do that a lot for our clients and we feel that we have the know-how and the ability to do it for ourselves. Um, so we kind of put our money where our mouth was and went and did it and it's been successful. Um, so we see that as a, as a potential opportunity in the future for us is, is acquiring some properties, you know, fixing them up, putting tenants in them, 
and that's an it's an area that he and I want to grow more into, um, and and have have the firm here and the you know as a support and being a part of that as well. So, you know, that was the first time doing a development project like that on your own. Yep, that was our first adventure into it. Lessons learned. What were your big takeaways from going through that process? Um, you know, we there's a lot of a lot of focus on on budget and, and costs and and uh, things of that nature. We were able to secure an SBA loan for that for that property for the property we purchased with a hundred thousand uh, dollar credit line, essentially to do our remodel. And we had done some rough estimating, and we figured we were probably in the hundred and sixty thousand dollar range to to renovate the building. Um, and you know, like our project, like other projects, you get into it, you open up the walls, you open up the roof, you open up certain aspects, and you start to find that uh, we're going to need to replace this and redo that. And so, you know, we probably didn't set aside enough contingency as we had hoped. Um, so, uh, lessons learned around that. It's probably, you know, take what we think we're going to spend and, and you know, add a much bigger contingency and make sure that we're covering. Do you remember what kind of, what percentage contingency you had on that? Yeah, we had about a 25% contingency. You probably needed more like 50 to 75% at the end of the day. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> it's a good chunk <laughs> of change, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it was a good chunk of change. But you guys, you guys pull it off successfully. You put tenants in there. What would you say was the toughest part of putting that whole deal together? Was it was it booking it out with tenants? Was it that that budget issue? Was it getting the SBA loan? Something else? You know, um, there honestly, there wasn't anything that really set us back on the project. I mean, even when when we started, um, you know, started running through change orders and having to get things, you know, extra money for certain things, you know, we didn't really, you know, thankfully we were able to cash flow everything. And so, you know, we just, we just kept our heads down and got it done. And we got the construction done just over 90 days, um, which was really fast. Mm. And, um, you know, we were just, there wasn't there wasn't any real terror any real real major challenges i mean even the budget was so it went over budget according to what we initially anticipated but even then it was you know like okay well this is what we're doing and we're just going to get it done so i think our perspective on it was was healthy we we knew what we were doing we knew what we were getting into we knew what the long term play was and you know we just made it happen mm. Well, thanks, Clay. It's been a it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I just like to follow up with the last question. Is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, or maybe a question you would have wished that I would have asked that I didn't? You know, um, what I you know what I what I find interesting is is kind of the structure of our firm, and, and that you know, didn't talk too much. We didn't talk much about the kind of how we structure our firm or how, how we're set up. But, you know, AB Design Studio is called AB Design Studio for a very specific reason. We wanted to be design centric and we wanted to create a studio environment. And, you know, even with best laid plans, it's a challenge to maintain it. But even 10 years in, we've done a pretty, pretty good job of maintaining our own uh, commitment to design excellence uh, in the world for whatever we're doing. Uh, we're constantly making sure that design excellence is part of what we do. And then in terms of our, our internal structure of our firm, we really, really push the studio aspect. We push the collaboration, collaboration with each other, collaboration with our clients, um, collaboration with general contractors. But Clay, every everyone does that. How does what does that mean specifically for you guys? How is well, that different that, from what other guys do? For us, we're con we're constantly setting up meetings and setting up up opportunities to have everybody at the table. It, it it's not it's not a let's wouldn't it be cool if that happened? It, we're constantly putting that into play. It's a you know 
I got to brush my teeth in the morning and I got to have a meeting with my team. And it's not a, it's not a happens like a happenstance mm -hmm. kind of conversation for us. We're really promoting it. We're getting people in, sit down, go through everything, put everything on the table and, and come up with what's, what's the best solution for the project. And I think for us, it's always about the project and we, we do our best like other architects that we know and to put our ego aside and to really go after what, what's important for the, what's important for the benefit of the project and the client. And that's, that's not always easy. Um, it takes, it takes an effort and it takes a commitment to it. And we're really excited that we continually bring ourselves forward in that commitment as much as we can. Yeah. In terms of team meetings, what are we talking here in terms of frequency? Are we talking uh, one, one meeting a week or more often? Less often? Um, more often we, ha we usually do about two or three times a week where we do pinups and people get around the table or the, or the wall and we, we put a project up and we, we go through it. Um, and it might be a small team, it might be a big team, you know, it might be two people on a project that we're, and we're doing it together or we might invite the whole office into a charrette and talk about a project, um, but it's, you know, minimum two, two to three times a week. Okay. So in terms of uh, firm structure, you said that you, you, ha you foster that collaboration mm -hmm. with staff, people outside, and then also the design focus. Is there anything else about the firm structure that you wanted to highlight that you feel is unique? Um, you know, like many architecture firms, I don't know how unique this is, but we do have a very open studio um, design and floor plan. So everyone's really, you know, we don't have any offices in our in our company. There's one bookkeeper's office, but that's the exception. Well, my partner and I sh share a, a space that's that's an office-like space, and but we're constantly, you know, in the mix with everybody. So we really try to make sure that. People are hearing what's going on in the office. People are understanding what's happening on projects that help foster communication. And, you know, I, I think that that's, that's a, a big part of our trying to keep this a studio environment. Um, you know, not a, we're trying not to be a top-down organization, although, you know, sometimes there has to be the top-down discussions. Um, but as much as we can, we're, we're really, you know, bringing in that collaboration, that studio environment, both from a, conceptual discussion as well as a structural conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, Clay, thanks for joining us. I encourage everyone to go check out your website. Uh, you got some amazing, beautiful work on there. If people want to reach out to you and contact you, how should they do that? Uh, the best way to reach us is info at abdesignstudioinc.com. Great. Thanks, Clay. Thank you very much. Have you thought about starting your own practice or are you looking to take your practice to the next level? If so, I wanted to let you know that free registration for the 2016 Architecture Business Plan Competition opens on December 1st, 2015. Start your planning process now and enter for a chance to win a grand prize of $10,000. Five finalists will be flown to Philadelphia to present their full plans to four industry-leading jurors. Travel and lodging are provided. So this is a one-of-a-kind competition. It's open to all licensed architects in the United States and Canada who are planning to start a new firm within one year or currently own a firm that is less than 10 years old. Visit archbusinessplan.com to learn more. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway.